I'm now porn adjacent. I run a tabletop game stream regularly with some porn stars, which you can check out with suitable precautions in place at tabletopless.org. And just know that I put as much effort into this campaign as I would any other tits or no tits. Hello, lovelies. Sorry about the spate of kind of vloggy videos, uh, housekeeping at the end, as per. But I wanted to touch on this idea of mostly peaceful in regard to current protests and riots and violence and so on in the US and indeed elsewhere. Because I think people are reading into that propagandizing where it would be my assessment, being older and wiser, that this is actually an attempt to compensate for a kind of natural bias and propagandization that occurs in news reporting of events like this. Cast your minds back, dilly do, dilly do, dilly do, dilly do, to 2010 and earlier. Anytime there was a, a G8 or a G20 summit, there would be a big riot and protest. Mostly a protest. And in these events, something like a, a Starbucks window getting smashed in would grab all the headlines. Not what the protesters were actually protesting about, not that the majority of the 10,000 or so people that turned up or more to some of these protests carried off their protests peacefully. No, it was the one guy that shoved a brick through a Starbucks window that got all the attention. And a great wail of protests went up from protesters, oddly enough, that this was biased reporting, that they weren't reporting on why people were protesting, what people were protesting for, that the protests were overwhelmingly peaceful, not always, but in a lot, in a lot of cases, but instead the news was hyper-focused on any violence or vandalism or whatever that took place. And that's where I began to encounter the phrase mostly peaceful, coming from the protesters protesting the fact that the news naturally fixates on the more exciting and interesting story and not what they were protesting about or that the vast and overwhelming majority of people involved were peaceful. Let's take an example from the other side of the aisle, if you will. One of the recent Brexit, pro-Brexit protests that went on, well, not that recent I guess, but uh, one of the main ones that actually made headlines they didn't fixate on what the people were protesting about or the vast majority of perfectly peaceful, skin-headed sad sacks that turned up to the protest. Oops, that's my bias showing. But they did focus on the one drunk guy who took a piss on the memorial marker of a policeman who had died protecting people from an Islamic fundamentalist. You would think the kind of pro-Brexit protesters that turned up would lionise and make a hero of this policeman, but the drunk guy pissed on his grave. Well, it's this memorial market. And that is what grabbed the headlines and the attention, not the mostly peaceful, if somewhat boisterous and confrontational, protest that went on, but the act of pissing on a grave marker, even though this was just one guy. Is, is that fair? Does it make sense to report a whole protest on the basis of one minority incident. Whatever side of the aisle that you're on, doesn't it make more sense to properly contextualize whatever is being whatever is being said, whatever point is being made, whatever incident. So a million people turned up to protest XYZ in London today. Uh, the vast and overwhelming majority of the protest was peaceful but a handful of people smashed and set fire to a bookshop. Yeah, that, that, that fully contextualized it. It is mostly peaceful. Something bad did happen as well. You know, here's what it was about. Yeah, that, that, that gives a full story. So that mostly peaceful doesn't seem to me to be an attempt to propagandize what is going on or, or to sanitize it, but rather an attempt to correct for almost an unconscious bias, though that's got a bad rap these days, that the news media has tended to have about protests and demonstrations 
in the past. Now, if they don't apply this phrasing mostly peaceful in both directions, on both political wings, on both sides of the causes, that would be a cause to cry bias and propagandizing. But if they do apply it evenly and fairly, then there's not so much of an issue. But the phrase itself is not the problem. It's an attempt to increase accuracy in reporting. I feel like I'm saying the same thing in these sort of uh, the vlog bits of the videos lately, but uh, I am really burnt out. Um, I'm finding everything very difficult. Uh, my creative energy is burnt out and I have obligations that I didn't used to have. I have to write uh, six 500 word short stories per month. I'm about halfway through those every month uh, for this text app that I produce stories for. And I have the weekly tabletopless streaming game, which is a, a lot of effort, but very rewarding. Uh, I've been running stream games on Saturdays as well. Um, with what went on with Tabletop Plus happening sort of in, in the middle of that. So I'm now running two games a week, which is more than I have done since I was in my mid-twenties, I suppose, when I was in a, in a house share with a lot of other gamers. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's difficult and I've got obligations, um, which is why I'm slacking on a lot of other stuff, because what energy I do have has to go into these obligations. So if you want to suspend your Patreon payments or, or whatever else until I'm back up to, to full speed, um, yeah, I, I would understand. Um, yeah. Also, I'm a bit put off uh, by what's happened on YouTube and finding it hard to get back into making videos, as, as you may have guessed. Because while I wasn't uploading videos, the number of people subscribing to me went up and up and up. And then when I started making videos again, the amount of increase started going down and down and down again. It's a bit disheartening when you put work into something and it seems to actually work against you. It's a bit odd. Um, there's a Kickstarter started up for a thing called Bar Teresa. I did the promo video for that, so I've got some video work that's been going for me. That's creatively and financially more rewarding than the other stuff that I do but it's also extremely stressful and takes a lot of effort and time and energy so I'm really just having to uh, reprioritize and figure out what I'm doing um, the grimdark rules that I put together right they're not doing quite as well as I would have hoped though the, the critical response has largely been good the reviews have been good um, but I put a tremendous amount of additional effort and finances into that book. Lulu now offers a much more price competitive full color hardback option, but you can't go into full distribution through Amazon, whatever with that. So I hardly make any sales through Amazon anyway with most of my material. But I'm trying to decide whether the, the higher quality output, the full color hardback is is the better way to go well that depends on direct sales through lulu and through post-mort.com so I, i'm thinking on that i think i need a one release isn't enough to really judge so i'll do a few more i really enjoyed the little one page rpg i did uh, my own dungeon with blackjack and hookers so i will do more for that because that's relatively low effort and very enjoyable <laughs> Uh, I've started relearning to draw. I got a, a visual tablet, which helps a great deal because you can draw more naturally on it. Um, maybe if I ever produce anything any good, <laughs> I'll share it with you. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few other things I'm thinking of doing. Like there's a, there's a lot of products on YouTube. I don't attract sponsorship. Well, I have attracted one sponsorship which was for diet and exercise stuff, which just is, isn't me at all. Uh, so I had to put them off even though they were offering me money. <laughs> it just wouldn't have been honest. But I thought I might do some videos on things that I actually do use and do like, even though I'm not being sponsored to talk about them. Because um, I thought that might be interesting. Um, 
Carl Smallwood on uh, Fact Fiend did an interesting video recently about their approach to sponsorships and the trouble they've had, which is uh, quite amusing. And uh, so I thought I might do something like that, but for things that I actually use and appreciate. Um, so that might that might be interesting. But if there's topics you want me to cover, uh, it's like a 10 year anniversary of the of the editing software that I use. So I could win a prize if I do a video on that, which is blatant promotion, but lots of people ask, so I might as well talk about that. But if there's anything else you want me to talk about, uh, let me know. I will try and get back into the swing of doing videos on the daily, even though it seems to actively hurt my channel and I will get back into doing reviews because that seemed to be a good way to slowly build the channel, at least um, interspersed with the other videos. Right. Speaking of, it's Tabletop Plus tonight, 10 p.m. UK um, on PlexStorm. Just search for Tabletop Plus or go to tabletopplus.org website. Uh, and you might see some good roleplay and some boobies. Zang. Sure, you could play one of those hoity-toity horror games where the most horrifying thing that happens is someone wearing a corset who really shouldn't. Or, you could grind a zombie's face into a belt sander.